Yo guys, so today chapter 3 season 2 got released and in this video I'm gonna go over how to make this season your best competitive season yet because there's a lot of new changes we can take advantage of and I also genuinely think this will be one of the easier seasons to do well in as doing well is pretty straightforward. So let's talk about what's new, how to adapt to the meta and how to make this your best competitive season yet. The first update we need to talk about is sprinting. Sprinting essentially allows us to move at a much higher speed for a limited amount of time. And this change is amazing for us competitive players. For everyone who has been watching me for some time, you know how serious I am about quick looting and farming. And this change will allow us to loot and farm even faster than we have been previously allowed to. Quick rotates as well as quick looting and farming will probably be the key to doing well consistently this season. To enable sprinting, what you want to do is head up to the menu in the top left of your screen, then go down to the settings wheel and select settings. Once you're in here, head on over to keybinds and where you see sprint, you want to bind that to a key that is easily accessible because this is a setting we will for sure use a lot this season. The next new thing in season two is mantling or climbing. And this is a really cool movement addition and how mantling will play in on competitive play is hard to say after only one day of the new season, but there is definitely some creative opportunities to use this new movement addition to your advantage. When it comes to mantling in game, you have two mantle activation settings. Firstly, hold jump. All you need to do here is hold your spacebar down to climb or mantle over a wall. And then you have hold forward, which means all you have to do is press W or whatever your forward button is to climb over a wall. I heavily suggest using the hold jump activation setting as the hold forward setting is more prone to accidental mantles during fights. The next thing I quickly want to touch on is the fact that you can sprint or slide into doors now to open them, not needing to click your open door button at all. This really doesn't matter that much for competitive play, but if someone is 1 HP inside of a building behind the door that you're fighting, you're infinitely better off either sprinting or sliding through that door, compared to just walking through it like we've all been doing in the past. Moving on, we gotta talk about the new weapons this season has come with. And the first new weapon is the Combat SMG. The Combat SMG is arguably even better than the Stinger SMG, and I really never hoped I would have to say those words, but here we are. I think using this SMG is going to allow for some pretty nasty beams. But even though I think it's better than the Stinger, it's not like 10 times better or anything, but I do think it is slightly better. The second new weapon this season is the Striker Burst Rifle. This AR is like an AUG with a scope. It's better than the Ranger AR and will probably be the most popular rifle this season. There's nothing crazy or special to add to these two new weapons other than the fact that with the SMG you should really practice the recoil patterns of the gun. To do this simply go to a wall with your SMG in hand and stand still and shoot out a mag. And then what you want to do is you want to drag down so much that you can control the recoil in a good way. Mastering the recoil of this gun will make you much more likely to succeed in fights and the game in general this season. The same practice can be done with pretty much any other gun that has recoil in Fortnite. There's also 7 items that has been unvaulted. So let's take a look at all 7 and explain how you can abuse these items this season to your advantage. Starting off, the first weapon that got unvaulted is the Thermal Scoped AR. This gun now shoots faster than previously with more recoil and it does slightly less damage. However, that doesn't change the fact that this gun will be the best gun for Surge in the game. What this means is that if you know you're in a high elo lobby where you need a lot of Surge and you get lucky and get this gun out of a chest, you should probably take it. Dying to Surge with this gun is impossible and if you somehow manage to do so, you have done something seriously wrong. I know for sure I will take this weapon in my last game in duos tournaments this season to ensure that me and my duo are good on Storm Surge. The second weapon that got unvaulted is the Drum Shotgun. I know, I know, a real crowd favorite. I really wonder how the meeting went when they decided to unvault this good for nothing shotgun. This gun now shoots slower, has ever so slightly increased damage, a tighter bullet spread and better falloff, meaning it's buffed a tiny tiny little bit. 
The revolver also got unvolted this season, and it's an okay gun for Surge, but nothing in comparison to the thermal scoped AR. Or even the Ranger. The drop off on the gun is better than any other gun, pretty much, but I wouldn't recommend holding a revolver because it really isn't worth a full inventory slot. Remote explosives or C4s and shockwaves also got unvolted, but not in competitive, so that's nothing we have to worry about. But the Storm Scout and the thermal scoped revolver has been unvolted. What this means is that on broken vending machines, you can now get a Storm Scout and a thermal scoped revolver. You could not get these two exotic items from a broken vending in season 1. Ioblimps is the next topic of today's video and this is an interesting addition to the game competitively speaking. Why it's an interesting addition is because everyone will try to get on top of these blimps in order to get storm surge in stacked lobbies. I, however, don't believe this will be a play that consistently gives great results. This is because everyone will try and claim an IO blimp. And there is so many entry points that in order to have full awareness over the blimp, you will have to waste quite some time paying attention to what happens around you. I will have a strict no blimp policy when playing tournaments. And whether you want to do this or not is completely up to you. But I just know I will be more consistent if I don't go to the blimps for surge, because everyone will be there. Everyone will rotate out of there at the same time when a new zone pulls, making rotations difficult, and it's overall gonna be very demanding on your awareness to play blimps at the highest level. Tanks and Siege Cans has also been added to the game in Season 2. And Siege Cans will probably be a great form of mobility and a great thing to include into your rotation route for different zones. Tanks definitely have some incredible advantages to them as well, but keep in mind it's a slow moving vehicle, the weapons aren't really super impressive, and I honestly just can't see anything right now that is super broken about it that we can abuse for tournaments. Yes, it is a good way to win off spawn, but then again, it comes at the cost of not being able to farm up your mats and just looting in general. I can also pretty much confidently say that tanks will be removed from competitive after the preseason. I don't believe we will see them in this season's FNCS, but hey, if I'm wrong, I'll see what I can do to come up with a plan on how to take advantage of these tanks in competitive. The item we're gonna talk about now is literally the meta. And this is an item you should always, without exception, hold in duos if it stays the way it is right now. And the item I'm talking about is the Cow Catcher. The Cow Catcher is basically like a crash pad on steroids. So what you can do with the Cow Catcher is, as a solo, get 100% guaranteed drop down elimination because your opponents can't build if you throw this item correctly under them. The cow catcher can be found in these long red ammo boxes, and this means that being a good looter is extremely important this season, as you need to take every single ammo box and you have to make sure you have four of these every game in duos. Having four of these should be four free refreshes, which is a bare minimum of 600 mats. And that's just Siphon alone. And the player you kill will have some mats on them as well. So in short, use the co-catcher to get refreshes. It is the meta this season. And lastly, for the final thing we need to cover, we have the Repair Torch. An item that repairs vehicles when they lose health. And I honestly believe this item can be super viable in competitive. Whether or not it's worth an inventory slot for an entire game is a question I've been asking myself ever since the Season 2 update was released. And I honestly think if you make a game plan around the Repair Torch and using cars, I think you can 100% make it work. But you need to have a pre-planned route ready, as well as good spots to look for surge and knowing how to protect your car. I think if you learn how to play far edge, and by far edge I mean playing absolute edge in second, third and the fourth zone, you can probably easily get the car into 50-50 and often also into the first moving zone. And this can be a very very good strategy as there isn't any movement other than pads this season. But on that note guys, I'm signing off, let me know what you want to see tomorrow and I'll happily make that video. I have some plans ready, but I'm more than open for your input. Anyways, my name is Marion TM. Stay safe and take care.